I am David, your developer on duty. In this video, I will show you plugins for fuzzy finding, Git integration, language server support, and testing. I add my plugins. I'm using FCF for fuzzy finding. To search for files you actually don't need a plugin, you can just set the path to star star and use vim's internal find command. However, for large code bases, I think FCF is quicker. I use vim fugitive for git interactions and vim git gutter to show git signs in your code. For the configuration, I bind leader space to search for all files tracked by git using FCF, leader ff for rip grab. These lines make sure that I can use FCF for file path completion using CXCF and it makes sure that the directory relative to the current file is used. Here I make sure that I can exit FCF hitting escape and for git integration I just bind leader GG to show the git status. Let's source this file and plug install it. Let's see this in action. I fire up vim. In my project directory, I hit space space to search for a file, enter the name, and I'm immediately there. Now let's say I want to change this path. I hit control X, control F, and I can fuzzy find a file and it's inserted. Now regarding git integration, if I remove this line here, vim git gutter will show me a sign. And the same holds true if I change a line. To see the git status, I press space gg and you can see I have one unstaged file. I can press bracket bracket to jump to that section, hit s to stage the file, see the diff by pressing the equal sign and I can hit cc to commit, enter a commit message, quit and I committed it. Now to get support from the language server, I need to add two more plugins. One is nvim lsp config and the other one is completion nvim. This one is used for auto completion. Regarding the configuration, I'm using Node.js, so I have to set up my TS server and I attach it to my auto completion plugin. Then I define some mappings, for example, go to definition, hover, code action, and so on. Now for this to work, I need to install the TS server, so let's do this. Now let's write, source the file and plug install it. Now let's see what the language server can do. I fire up vim and I open some javascript file called apptest.js and now the language server is running and it will check my code. So if I do some mistake, you can see that the language server notifies me. Let's define some function called sleep. For this I require util and I want to use the function promisify here, which I get through code completion and I want to promisify set timeout. Now sleep is declared but its value is never read, so let's change this by defining a new function called foo, which returns sleep and does some console.log foo. Let's call foo and see what we can do. Now it shows us that this function may be converted to an async function. So let's do this with a code action. We can also rename foo to foo. And you can see that all instances are updated. The last plugin I want to show you today is vim test. So let's add it. It's a test runner, which lets you easily run tests. I add the configuration. I define some key mapping, for example, test nearest, test file, test suite, and test the last test. I define my test strategy to be near Vim and my term position to be vertical. Let's write it and source the file and plug install the plugin. Now let's see how vim test works. I open vim and a JavaScript test file called apptest.js. Now if I hit leader tf, the whole file is run and you can see the result. If I hit any key combination, the terminal closes. 
I can also run an individual test by going with the cursor to that test and hitting leader TT. Now only that single test is run. And if I want to inspect the result, I can always hit escape and do some magic here. Now if I go into another file, I can always run the last test by hitting leader T underscore. Okay, it's done. In the next video, we will look at Vim Spectre, which is a plugin to debug applications in Vim. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.